Lugia has always been a fan favorite legendary since its introduction all the way back in Generation 2. Being the second legendary to be made after Mewtwo, Lugia has held a special place in the hearts of casual players for a long time. But in competitive play, this changes a bit. But things haven't always been this way. While Lugia now is known specifically for its poor performance in the competitive scene, when it was first introduced and in up to almost Generation 6, it was even considered good. So let's break that down and see how and why Lugia has become a symbol of a failed legendary. All the way back in Pokemon Gold, Silver, and Crystal, Lugia was known for being quite potent. While not on the same levels as something like Mewtwo, who was an offensive powerhouse, it still found a powerful niche, and typically outdid its gold counterpart Ho-Oh, both in usage and in viability rankings. Over the years, this trend even continued. Lugia, no matter where it was found, typically was a great wall in tears. In GSC, it used Curse and Toxic Stall, along with Recover's 32 PP, to make itself unkillable, as well as wear enemies down as it sets up, and in future generations, like Generation 3, it typically kept up this trend. Within Generation 3, otherwise known as the ADV metagame, Lugia is known as the Great Wall. If your team can't kill it, your team won't succeed. With it being one of the most versatile walls, it could set reflect, stall with recover, toxic, and whirlwind, and generally be almost unkillable. The core way of defeating it, in fact, was actually quite similar to the method of defeating Hoa. Status. A paralysis would drop Lugia's otherwise great speed, limiting its use of fast recovery, toxic would put on a hard timer, and burning it, while a rarer use, would stop choice band sets from working. But this isn't to say the ADV metagame game was all sunshine for it. In fact, its greatest enemy in the tier tended to be rain. Kyogre's use of thunder within the tier greatly blocked Lugia's defensive abilities, and at times even kept it from working, turning Lugia into simple fodder. But on the same page, Lugia didn't always lose to Kyogre. Certain variants of Kyogre, like Calm Mindsets, hated fighting Lugia. Being toxic or whirlwinded out would greatly hamper their utility and stop them from initiating a late game sweep, turning what should be a strong counter into a mere annoyance. And before we move on, I'd like to ask you to subscribe. This channel has grown a lot lately, and I really do appreciate the support. Now let's go back to the video. In Generation 4, its reign upon the tier continued and was arguably made stronger even with the introduction of Stealth Rocks. While it hated the passive damage it took from them, it found itself even more capable of breaking the tier's newfound favorite flying types and turning them into death fodder. The core change in this generation is its use of Ice Beam or the typical Toxic or Whirlwind. Lugia's Ice Beam and Great Speed allowed it to outdo the likes of Rikaza, Ho-Oh, Palkia, Groudon, and non-scarfed Kyogre. While Ice Beam only really dropped Rayquaza, the other mons didn't appreciate the damage or inability to outspeed or recover from an obnoxiously tanky Lugia. In only one generation before its true fall, Lugia actually became quite notoriously powerful in Generation 5. With Roost, it could quickly heal and drop its weakness to Electric and Rock, but most notably, it gained the ability Multi-Scale. While needed to keep its HP full, Multi-Scale assisted it greatly in stalling, and with Whirlwind, it could swap around teams forever that failed to drop it quickly. Generation 6, though, is the first generation we saw Lugia begin to see its fall to the lowest tier, but for the time being, Lugia still stayed decently high within the tier. With good bulk, toxic, and roost, it was still obviously great, but its real issue became the difficulty of keeping away hazards. Rocks were almost impossible to keep away, and while many options for hazard removal existed, the core way of removing hazards was actually defog which counteracted Lugia's stalling abilities. With Whirlwind, it would swap mons around, building up hazard damage on the enemy team, and using Toxic for extra continuous damage, and more. But with the rocks on Lugia's side, it lost its ability to reliably swap around and out of status or high damage threats, especially with its loss of multi-scale. And for Lugia, things only got worse in Generation 7. Z-moves actually threatened to break non-multi-scale Lugia, and some Pokemon started becoming too strong to wall, Mega Salamence, for example, could break it, especially if it drops too much HP from Stealth Rocks, and Primal Groudon and Kyogre could threaten it out too, but it still kept a decent role. While it did have to allocate more into one side defenses, it became very good at that one side. Previously mentioned defensive Primal Groudons failed to break Lugia if it's fully invested in physical defense, and if multi-scale manages to stay around, it's almost impossible to break. In Sword and Shield, even without Z-moves, its descent down continued powerhouses of the tier continued to grow stronger, but it still kept a bit of walling potential, walling the likes of Zygarde, Groudon, and Rayquaza. But this didn't really matter. Even these mods could break it without multi-scale, and with the amount of hazard removers starting to descend in Sword and Shield, which continues in Scarlet and Violet, keeping multi-scale around was almost impossible. Of course, Heavy Duty Boots partly counteracted this, but Leftovers was almost too good not to take still. 
so it wasn't really a fan of this. And the last straw was the fact that its counter list included two whole types, which also had great walls. At this point, just using Lunala or Necrozma was sadly better, but how else should we make this a solid glaring point than Scarlet and Violet, the Indigo Disc DLC, of which brought back Lugia amongst a plethora of legendaries, made sure to keep almost every legendary just as good, or even better. But they had to nerf something, so why not kick the dead horse that was Lugia a bit farther down? After the release of Scarlet and Violet, it lost its access to two core moves, Toxic, as mentioned earlier, and Thunder Wave, which it probably would have used if it didn't have Toxic. Lugia's defenses are still great, sure, it walls almost anything at once, especially in the u Ubers tier of which it immediately fell to the bottom of. But what's the point of walling if you can't do a thing to them? You can't kill, and you can barely put any effect in. You just kinda sit there, never able to be killed. Which is great, but pointless. It's just a time waster. Use it to drop your opponent's sanity, and that's really it. Lugia, Smokin's Great Wall, fell off hard. Generation 7 onwards became the viewing of its quick descent, and now in Generation 9, Smokin removed its signature title in Ubers. Lugia is no longer Uber's Great Wall, and with this outlook, it may never be again. But what about the previously mentioned U Ubers? Well, it's still not great there, especially for a box art legendary. At the moment, Lugia only finds itself as a C plus rank mon, alongside the likes of Ogre Pond Wellspring, Palkia, and Alomaola. But what role does it serve? Well, since they kind of took everything away from Lugia utility role wise, it actually tends to prefer being a late game Calm Minesweeper, utilizing Psychic Noise to block healing, Air Slash, yeah, Air Slash, not Arrow Blast, as Lugia desperately needs the extra PB due to its awful damage, Recover, and typically Earth Power to counter the likes of Magirna. But it is still stomped around new Ubers as well, sadly. It is countered by almost any high tier wall or threat, and falls to almost any mon that has Encore or Taunt. Mons like Magirna, Arceus Dark, and Giratina, while it can still be utilized decently even with these threats, it needs a lot of backup from its team, and for a legendary sweeper, that's not really a great thing to have. And a lot of times, it is sadly just better to take anything else. Other than that, it's also a decent mix wall within the tier, able to check a plethora of threats with its typing and rather specific stat spread. Mons like Mewtwo, Landers, and Palkia Origin tend to fail to drop it, as their move pools lack the specific tools required, which gives Lugia a good synergy with a number of other mons like Arceus Dark, Great Tusk, and Toxapex, which makes it to some a more underrated option than tier, and to others, just something you have to think about to ensure you at least kill it. But in the end, Lugia's abysmally passive nature and a lack of moveset to assist that turns it into the clear defined symbol of a failed legendary. And it may be a very long time till we ever see it shine again.